Hello guys, welcome to the channel, Bob here. As you can see, we're back in Fallout 4 today, and uh, I'm I'm kind of I'm taking it easy. I'm, I'm sitting in a little beach little beach hut type thing <laughs> that's obviously ruined now and destroyed. I'm just soaking up the uh, soaking up the atmosphere and the uh, yeah taking in the sights. But enough of that. Let's get on to some some stuff. Now, before we start today, what I want to do is just say that there's a there's a tweaker someone someone called Bilago has released a tweaker for the game uh, which is really useful it basically allows you to do all the stuff that you had to go into the ini files to do like moving mouse acceleration uh, setting the resolution you want all that kind of stuff so um, that's really good go and download that if you're going to play Fallout 4 and you want to you want, you kind of want a PC experience that you know that you kind of you're hoping for particularly if you've got a 21 by 9 ratio monitor which I've got uh, that really really helps so you don't have to muck around with resolution and stuff you can also change the FOV in there as well it's brilliant go and load that down go go download that but I'll go Fallout 4 tweaker so today's video is going to be about um, what's it going to be about it's going to be about uh, the apocalypse uh, because I, I love an apocalypse first of all uh, and I think with I think of all things that we love it goes back to um, childhood, I guess, really stuff in st things in childhood that we experience. Um, I think those kind of things are things that stick with us. They have, they have the strongest impression on us. And um, back in the day, I played, but well, not not played. Um, I was, I don't know if anyone else had this when I was a kid. I don't think I don't suppose you, with the internet, I guess you don't get it anymore. But back in the day, I was a big horror film fan. Uh, but obviously, you didn't have the internet and whatnot. You had VHS videos, basically, or you had the television. Um, and in the UK, you was very limited on the amount of channels you could get. You basically had four, um, and that was it. Um, and as a horror fan, it was difficult to watch horror films. But as a kid, I kind of had that. I had that thing where I'm not sure. I'm sure in the UK anyway, a lot of people had it back in the 80s, where you it was a real big thing to watch a horror film, and you tried to kind of watch every every everyone you can, and you had, every film you, you, that you could, and you had to kind of watch them. Almost behind your parents' back, unless you had parents who didn't give a damn, I guess, really. Which, in some cases, that was the case. Um, but yeah, but it was a real thing, like watching horror films. It was a real sort of... Uh, they were even more kind of vilified and, and not not seen as normal back then. Um, so it was a real, yeah, a real rebel thing to do to try and sneak and watch a horror film around friends, or maybe you you rented it or something, or you, you, it's some way of kind of watching it on television. And I was very much like that. And one of those films that, um, well, there's a kind of a, a, a person, George uh, Romero, George Romero, basically, uh, his zombie films. He was very, very much, um, he had quite a big influence on me when I was young watching those films. I, I was lucky enough to watch Night of the Living Dead first, which was. Um, Kind of a zombie, you know, zombie apocalypse film, but it it, it was more centered around a, a small group of people stuck in a house and the, and the relationships between those people, um, relationships between uh, sort of you know man and female, racial racial tensions, those kind of things, um, and it was just amazing. You know, I was blown away by it, and then I saw Dawn of the Dead, and it was Dawn of the Dead that really had the sort of massive impact on me, and I came away just fascinated with the idea of of the apocalypse, a world where everything had just gone to rat shit, essentially. Um, it sort of, I mean, not not living dead. You kind of had that a bit, but um, it, it was kind of hinted upon. But it, it was all set in that particular house. Now, what are you doing, dog? Follow me. Uh, it was all set in, in a house, and it was about the relationships for the people stuck in those house, in, in that particular house. But Dawn of the Dead was more of a. Um, I don't want to do anything with dog. Just follow me, dog. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, Dawn of the Dead was more about um, the, the grander scale. You know, you saw the, the apocalypse on, on a much larger scale, and that left a big impression on me. I was uh, people, I guess people back in the day. You know, we used to. Head over there. I just want you to follow me, dog. That's all. Um, back in the day, people would, um, you know, you, you'd have fantasies and you'd dream about being Luke Skywalker. Um, when you were a kid, you know, or a soldier, uh, Han Solo probably would, would maybe be a better one than Luke Skywalker. Um, I'm stuck in the command thing for dog at the moment. I'm not quite sure why. I don't want a command dog to do anything at all. I just, I just want him to follow me. On me. Follow. There you go. That's fine. Uh, 
Yeah, so, but, but I, I spend quite a lot of time sort of dreaming, daydreaming and fantasising about being in a, uh, in a zombie apocalypse or, or an apocalypse of some kind. So, and that's stuck with me. You know, kind of like books, uh, Max, Max Brooks's books, uh, films, games. I, I've just had a, a real draw Toward, a strong draw towards the games where there's some, some something has happened. It doesn't have to be zombies, although I, I do love zombies. Unfortunately, zombies have been completely ruined, uh, mostly in games. Uh, with yeah, with their with their kind of overuse, essentially. Uh, I think I think Romero got zombies kind of spot on, but it doesn't have to be zombies. Just an apocalypse in general. And that's why these games appeal to me. And I was kind of try, I was kind of wanted to talk a bit today about why what the appeal was, and I think. Um, First of all, I want to say that the game is still amazing me. You know, whether I'm in the, still in the honeymoon period or not, I'm not sure. But the game is amazing me. I've just come down to the beach here, and as you can see, what I was talking about in the previous video, there's so much for me to go and examine and explore if I want to. Um, earlier on, I saw some. I'm sure I saw some kind of peep raiders probably up here. Um, there's some work equipment there. There's a great big factory type thing there. There's another factory type structure there. In the distance, there's a um, in a the distance there's a lighthouse I saw glowing last night so this game is just amazing uh, as I said before if you like this sort of game li literally you can stand in your in the game and there are points of interest for you to go and explore and you will you will often find stuff within within those points of interest interesting stuff going on um, there's actually a little, we can probably get up there maybe that's where the raiders were and there's like a satellite satellite dish up there and some other it's like a windmill isn't it I might, I might go and explore that later there may be some uh, some people up there but let's have a look over here this bit doesn't seem too interesting but anyway yeah the game continues to amaze me um, and if you like the if, if you like an apocalypse exploration type game as I do then you will uh, you will love this there's no doubt about that let's have a look over there so let's get on to the apocalypse sort of stuff then um, the main sort of topic of the video. As I said, I, th I think back in the day when you were a kid, you, in some ways you had more freedom, but in in other ways you have less freedom than adults. You know, you're, 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 I think you're, the freedom is the time that you have, but you're very limited by what you can do with that time, generally, like parameters set, set, set it down. But it's a beach, uh, <laughs> it's a beach, um, uh, a beach umbrella type thing over there and whatnot. Yeah, I can't see any bodies though, so it's probably not worth going to explore that section. Tires and cars and things. Uh, let's head this way. Yeah, so, so you're limited more by your time and the parameters that your, your parents set. Um, and I think, I think initially this, when I watched Dawn of the Dead, it was it was the a world without any kind of rules. And it's weird because I'm actually kind of I'm not a rules focused person. I hate rules and I hate. Um, I can hear gunfire, so there's some sort of there's some action going on somewhere over there. There's a deaf someone's fighting a deaf claw, <laughs> and it's amazing. These are the sort of things that happen. Uh, we're not going to get involved in that. Whoever that is, whoever they are, they're pretty tough because that deaf claw is not finding it at all easy. Whoa! Look at that. <laughs> the deaf, okay, so the deaf claw just knocked that guy sky high. <laughs> we will avoid that fight. Yeah, so uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting well off topic here. I'm going to go look at this building here because it seems quite interesting. But yeah, but you, I think it's a freedom. You know, I, I'm quite a lawful person, but I would say I'm the sort of person that follows the laws of, of the land, you know, laws of nature, uh, and laws that make sense. I don't like the petty laws that governments and police kind of impose on you. Uh, but I'm very much a person who I think everyone should do the right thing. I, I I think we should be able to use our own common sense really to do the right thing. Unfortunately, a lot of people can't, so <laughs> that's why we have these laws, I guess. But, but yeah, but but it was weird. It it wasn't the fact that the um, the dawn of the dead world was lawless. It was the fact that the freedom that these people could go anywhere. They could go into a supermarket and explore um, any shop they wanted. They could try on any outfit. And there's a little uh, little ship there, with, but boat there with someone. There's a feral ghoul hanging off the side of the boat. <laughs> let's have a let's have a little quick save and we'll go and have a look. Dog is barking over there, so I wonder if that ghoul is actually alive. Go there. I don't think it is anymore. Sorry, dog. 
I mean, he's rolling over, and I don't want to go there, he's saying. <laughs> um, let's go and check out the boat. There's an ominous... Oh, I should have used some Rad X first. No, let's not do that. Let me stay focused on the topic of the video, and I will do an exploration video at some point in the future. So, freedom, yes. In, in this world that I was seeing before me, there was a chaos and there were zombies, but there was also freedom. These people could essentially go anywhere they wanted and, and do whatever they wanted. Um, I could, in this world, I could cross over the road and go into my empty neighbour's house. And um, there's some combat going on here as well. Going to the, my empty neighbour's house, essentially, and um, look around and... and see how they live their lives get, get an idea of what their life was like whether it was good or bad or whatever it may have been um, but I had the freedom to do that as a fish uh, fish packing company <laughs> I think as a kid I, you kind of you know as I said you feel quite restricted by what you can do or, or I did anyway I had loads of time but not much to do with it um, but this this kind of world that Romero created kind of opened up all sorts of you know amazing imaginings for me where I, I could yeah, I could essentially go next door to my neighbour's house and uh, I think I can probably unlock that. Let's just, uh, let me just concentrate on this for a sec. Let's go a bit more that way, up a bit more. Oops. There we go. Yeah, so, so I could go next door to my neighbour's house if I wanted to. And um, yeah, and essentially as I said, very much like in Fallout, you know, you, you, you go into a building, quite often you, the, the designers have um, left behind just little things that, that you that give you a feel for how that person lives, and I could do that in that world. Um, obviously, there are lots of other things that go with, with that, <laughs> like the, the blood and the, the death and the, you know, the starvation and the disease and, and whatnot, and the zombies, of course, but, but it was that sense of freedom, I think, that that essentially allowed me to just go where I wanted to go and look at what I wanted to do without there being any restrictions. And um, obviously, in in the real world, that would be would be, would be an issue because I think that, like for me, I would be the sort of person who would want to just go and do that just to look at it. Whereas I think that in those kind of lawless type type worlds, if there was such a thing, uh, and I guess you do get that kind of thing in certain parts of the world, don't you? Still. Uh, things are quite lawless, and they f they feel almost like um, we don't need any of that stuff. Bottle cap mine, we'll take that. And some medex. Yeah, it almost feels lawless, you know, that people can go around and do whatever they want. Although quite often, unfortunately, violence is uh, is involved. But that I think that was the attraction for me. It was a freedom for me to explore and go and do go and look at kind of what I wanted to look at. Because I'm quite I'm like that in real life. You know, before I was sick, um, I used to like walking. You know, I could really walk anywhere it gets to a point where you kind of you get lazy and you don't do those kind of things but there's a there's a uh a radiated ghoul over there are they called glowing ones or something or just stuck on that that out <laughs> cropping that's amazing we we'll have, have to go and look at that at some point uh yeah but that that's what it was it was like a it was the ability to explore um but the boundaries but the, obviously the boundaries that I liked were, it, it was safe. Um, you know, there were, there were no zombies and, and whatnot. Take that bit out and just allow for the exploration. That's what I like in real life. I like exploration in real life. Uh, walking and just discovering new things. Um, and I think that, that translates into the games. I think that's why I like these games, because it allows me to fulfil that fantasy. You know, when I was in, um, what's the name of the, uh, I don't know what's wrong with my... My pit boy is all zoomed in for some reason. I'm not quite sure why that is. Let's go to the map. But anyway, yeah, when I was in, I think it was Sanctuary, wasn't it? Yeah, when I was in Sanctuary, you know, that Sanctuary allowed me to walk into my neighbour's house and just get an idea of how how they lived. And that that was just really interesting for me. You know, it, it was really really interesting. Uh, I'm trying to think of the first game I played where I I got that sense of freedom. It was probably a. Uh, it was actually probably not even a 3D game you know I guess it was just some sort of early exploration title on uh, look at that hardened combat sniper rifle we'll take that but I'm carrying too much shotgun shell hey, stay, there, boy. stay there dog let's just trade with dog let's give him some stuff um, you do get over you do get um, overburdened unfortunately in the game quite a bit and that's one of the 
Uh, I need to go and drop off some of my uh, my tat as well. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. I've got no bullets for that, so you can carry that. Uh, you can carry that as well. Deathclaw hand. <laughs> carry the deathclaw hand. There we go. <laughs> um, we'll uh, we'll deal with that later. I, as I said, I need to go and get rid of some of my tat that I've got. We can actually go in this building, but I don't want to spoil too much for you. Which is just more of a, a topic topical video, I think. Uh, I'll go into the uh, the building afterwards. So yeah, so so that was essentially it. You know, the, it, it was games that allowed me to explore worlds, um, just look at people's, look at how how I can actually go through and through the roof. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I don't want to spoil things. But yeah, it just allowed me to explore, see how people lived, um, discover new things without the the restrictions of being in the real world. I think that's that's essentially what it was all about. And that's what these games are all about as well. And uh, and Fallout 4 is, is probably a game more so than any other other game, um, really. I mean, if, as I said, if you stand on the edge here, you can easily pick out half a dozen, maybe ten different... Uh, there's some little houses on the beach over there. Uh, you can easily pick out... There's a church in the distance. You've got the lighthouse, some more buildings there. You can easily pick out a dozen points of interest for you to go and explore. And going to explore these again, you know, that you're rewarded for it. There, there are, it's not just an empty, barren land. Uh, there, there's stuff going on, and, and even if you get somewhere and there's no combat, you know, you, you'll get you get a flavour of um, you get a flavour of of what that building was all about, who, who lived in it, you know, and that, I think that's a that's a key thing that most games just don't do. I mean, I, I would even go as far as to say that. Um, the Witcher 3 isn't anywhere near as good as Fallout 4 for that kind of thing. There are, you do find locations, there are some interesting points of interest. But uh, but Fallout 4, I guess cause, because Fallout 4 is based on the real world, more so than The Witcher 3. And the real world essentially is a lot more, um, a lot more densely populated and densely structures and more dense buildings and whatnot. I guess that's that, that would make sense that it was the case but I don't think a game has gone this far before to to give us this this world to explore that we've that we've got um, and that's why I like the apocalypse that's why I've always been fascinated by the apocalypse it started with Dawn of the Dead and, it, and it's gone on from there you know it's, uh, it's gone on in, into games books and uh, uh, films and Fallout 4 is just my ideal game I mean I, I'm gonna spend so much time playing this I'm already planning a build uh, for for the second playthrough, uh, playing on survival survival difficulty level, uh, yeah, and it, and it's just phenomenal, just a phenomenal phenomenal world to be in. Uh, the game's got lots of, well, the game apparently has lots of issues. Um, a lot of people are criticising a lot of things. I mean, so, I mean, there was someone who apparently ran across the whole one, one from one side of that to the other, and complained it only took eleven minutes. And I think that I think once you reach a point where you've um, where you're willing to run across the map to see how, how far it, how long it takes you, uh, and then complain about it, I think you've kind of lost the point of games. <laughs> I think games are dead to you, and you should probably uh, little boat now. Let's go and check out the boat. Uh, yeah, games are dead to you, and you'd probably find a different hobby. You know, if if that's the sort of thing that you should that you're complaining about. So many other things. Well. I mean, there's there's some forums, some hardware forums that I go to, and there's a guy on there complaining that. The game was running fine for him, but he was complaining that if he went to a certain point in a, in the city and to up to a up, up, up to a certain height on a building and looked out, his frame rate dropped a bit. And it, and these are the sort of things that people are complaining about. Um, and it's weird. And I guess that's just the internet, isn't it? You know, the internet. I, I've kind of stopped, almost stopped reading people's opinions about games and stuff because it's just it spoils it, you know. And for whatever reason, these people are not finding any any enjoyment from it you know they it's, it's a game you know people spend people have spent an awful lot of time programming this game it's an open world game you know there are going to be a lot of bugs you've got to you just got to accept that really let's have another look another quick save um but that's but that's the video that's the end of this this tale <laughs> another tale i'm gonna go back to the fish packing place because i want to explore that but that's why i like the apocalypse it's just the sense of it's a false sense of freedom isn't it that's what i like about it um i can explore things I, I can i can kind of i can you know i can saturate my kind of wanderlust uh my desire to to explore 
uh, in a relatively safe environment. The only thing that's going to die is my character, I guess. <laughs> how how we would perform in a real apocalypse? Well, I, I don't know. Um, I think reading books and watching films and and playing games. I think that for those of us that do that, I think we would be better equipped to survive in the apocalypse. I think we'd be yeah we'd be better prepared for it. Um, weird, weird to say, but I think I think we would yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been me doing an, another video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you're playing Fallout and you're watching these videos, as I said, I'm trying not to spoil anything for you. So I think you can watch them relatively safely, hopefully. Um, let's see if uh, no, we can't we can't knock that down. I don't think probably. Uh, yeah, but as I was saying, I'm, I'm trying to be spoiler free on these games. Uh, I'm just trying to. I guess I'm just kind of we're just covering topics, talking about games and yeah, and environments, um, atmosphere, uh, mechanics, that kind of thing. That's what we're going to be doing. I've got to go and check out that guy because that's freaking me out. Um, I kind of hope it's an NPC maybe that we can talk to in some way, but I, I'm going to assume that it's not. Um, there are some bodies over there on the beach. I need to go and check those out. <laughs> I'm just you know. <laughs> <laughs> there must be hundreds of hours of gameplay uh, in this game. Uh, it's not about its faults. As you can see, the mist's coming in. It's getting a bit mistier. It's not about its faults, you know. But but some of the some of the criticisms that people have are just I find quite bizarre and yeah, weird. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I will speak to you again soon.